Imagine an amazing world waiting for you, hidden behind the book covers and dusty pages of any mystery. That is the magic of reading, and that's why we are here today. Hello, my name is JT. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. Welcome to the Good Read Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to those of you guys who are watching me right now, who are listening to me on SoundCloud, who are listening to me on iTunes, and who are also watching me on the Periscope app or watching me on Facebook Live, thank you guys so much. And to those of you guys also who are um, listening to me um, through those outlets, through the audio, purely audio outlets, I might make some comments to people because I'm talking to people through in my chat, through my chat on Periscope, or through my chat on Facebook Live, because this podcast is also lively broadcasted. So, you know, you might hear some of me say, hey, what's up, Bill? You might hear me say, hey, what's up, Connor? You might hear me say a lot of different things. So apologize about that, you know, but, you know, we have to build a sense of community here. So how has your week been going? How have you been? What's been new in your life? Comment. Comment if you're listening to me on SoundCloud, iTunes, or YouTube. Comment and let me know what's been going on in your life. I want you to tell me what's been going on with your life. What new events are happening to you right now that might be important for me to know as your podcaster, as your particular voice of the streets. Um, For me, it's been a lot going on. You know, I'm finally, finally, finally starting to book some very good interviews for you guys waiting. Um... Like I told you last week, we're going to have the great and talented Michael J. Sullivan interviewed here next Tuesday. It's looking like next Thursday, we might have Ellen Krugner, very, very talented author, very, very talented woman. It's looking like we're going to have her next Thursday. Well, that's going to be something very, very interesting for you guys to listen to. I'm still trying to work on April Rain. Um, very beautiful lady, by the way. We have tried so many times to get a set date together, but it's just that both of us have totally different schedules, so it's hard for us to arrange a perfect time for us to meet. So, but trust me, trust me, it's coming soon. It's coming soon, and I promise you, we're going to get together and we're going to do something great. I promise you, this whole type. Also. I'm really, really trying to, and as you can tell, I tagged her in this podcast, too, simply because I was hoping she would see this. I was really trying to get into interview with Holly Black. I was hoping that she could possibly participate, but, you know, each to teach is, or, you know, if she, couldn't, if she couldn't participate, then it is fine. I understand completely if she needs not to. But um, outside of that, so this episode... I named it the Divine Comedy episode because, in case you guys don't know, um, the Divine Comedy is a poem written by the great legendary Dante Alighieri. Dante Alighieri. I don't. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for tuning into the Periscope podcast. I appreciate that, my man. Hope you can give me some hearts. Um, Don, the Divine Comedy is a book written by Dante Alighieri. He's a famous, very, very, very famous um, Italian writer, and. Um, what he what he did was he did a whole poem talking about his journey through hell, his trip through hell, him going through hell, how it felt like him going through the actual bowels of hell, through the totally different levels of hell. Um, when he went through this world, he, you know, he encountered he encountered totally different types of torture, all the levels of hell, the different torture that they had, the different um the different tortures, the different levels, the different circles around hell, the different creatures, the different entities. And what was fascinating about this novel was he mixed the concept of Greek mythology with biblical mythology and biblical art. And he created this very, very beautiful novel. Now, what confused me about the novel when I first read it and picked it up was the book is called Divine Comedy. It tripped the hell out of me because to me, it wasn't a comedy. You know, you're talking about a man going through a trip through the bowels of hell, through the seven levels of hell, not knowing whether he's going to come back out or not. So to me, it was crazy as hell to call it a comedy. But then after doing a little bit more research, I didn't know that in those times, Dante was um, born in the 1200s, by the way, 1200s, 13th century Italy. I didn't know that in those times, 
when you had somebody when you had a, a writing and it wasn't and it didn't end in the hero being killed when it didn't end in the hero being killed when it didn't end in um tragedy and just terribleness or whatever whatnot it was called a comedy because it ended on a good note so basically for example even if you had a show where like uh, it'd be like a romantic scenario and even though you know, there wasn't a bunch of humorous and gags or anything like that. Just because you have that nobody died in the end. Nobody got really hurt. The hero didn't die. His wife didn't suffer anything like that. You would call it a comedy versus tragedies at that time. Were when you had the hero die, when you had just this most awful, like, for example, the Orestes play. The Orestes play where the son killed the, the, son killed the mother and was tortured by the Furies for his whole life. That scenario is what you would call a tragedy play. The ironic thing about that, when you think about it, is if you're a fan of comedy like I am, I'm a very, very avid fan of stand-up comedy and all forms of it. The funny thing what you realize is, is that most good comedy, most good comedy comes from a tragic point of view. It comes from a tragic point of view. It comes from that point of view to where, you know, I was hurt in the past. I was treated wrong totally. So I feel like, I feel like, um... I feel like, you know, it's not going to be bad for me. Hey, um, I, I betrayed it. I was, by the way, I'm sorry. I said, hey, I'm actually recording this in the studio right now in the library. And this lady walked by, you know, very present little lady. So I decided to say why, waving hi to her. But um, so that's the voice of comedy comes from a tragic standpoint. So it's ironic that she separated comedy and tragedy in those times with the idea that Comedy is the light side of things, where tragedy is a good side. Of, is the end. I think what it's saying is comedy is a good ending, tragedy is a bad ending. You know, and it's odd to me. And it's funny too on that aspect too, because most comedians, most great comedians that I've seen that I know, particularly in the African American community, most great comedians are very tortured. They generally die very torturedly. They die generally die died through alcohol abuse they didn't we really die through substance abuse they didn't we really die through suicide they you know they always they always have these these uh, these hidden emotions these hidden well of emotions that make them self-destruct and basically almost kill themselves even kill themselves sometimes because you know it's a lot of the pain that they're dealing with and like i said in my last episode or it wasn't in my last it was the second to my last episode like i said in my second to last episode a lot of the times when you're an artist the source of your creativity and the magic of it comes from that pain, comes from that angst, comes from that feeling of, oh my God, nobody, nobody, oh my God, nobody, nobody loves me, nobody loves me, nobody cares. It comes from that. It comes from that sense of pain and agony. So when you have that, when you have that, you know, it can make you a great artist, but at the same time, it can make you in the inside a very lonely and terrible and tortured person. And that is why. You know, like the sun, like the sun in a lot of ways, when you're an artist, you have to focus on the times that you shine, not the times that you don't shine and you're overshadowed by the moon. You have to focus on those times. Um, and anyway, to get back to the divine comedy, you know, I remember reading how a lot of people, because um, a lot of people in those times when they read the divine comedy, they were fascinated by the book. So they had thought the divine comedy was actual prediction of what hell was like they thought the divine comedy was an actual prediction of what hell was like what they had waiting for them in purgatory and i've always said this this was this proved the reaction that i read that modern that at those times italians and greeks and everybody else had to that book it proves a theory that i've always had about great literature and it's also a theory that i kind of have about the bible to some extent and don't quote me on this i believe that all all great religions were born because of great works of literature. All of them. The Bible, through historic, through historical research, through archaeological research, the Bible is a branch, little pieces of the branch of the tree of the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh was a very famous composition of different poems from the Mesopotamian era. Um... This is a very controversial topic, obviously, because, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. But I feel that that's how it is for most of them. Even with the book of Islam, even with the book of Islam, the Quran, the Quran comes from the Bible, comes from that same source. And 
another good example of that too is there's a other good religion, not a good religion. I hate to say it like that. It's a religion called Scientology. I'm positive you've heard of Scientology. It's no way you couldn't have heard of Scientology. The actual writer of the actual um, person who commenced Scientology was a very famous fiction writer named I forgot his name. I want to say it was Ron L. Hubbard, but he was a fiction writer. And this fiction writer, this talented fiction writer, he took the concept that he gave a world in a book and, hey, Cash Cardi, what's up? Thank you for listening to the broadcast. I appreciate that. But he took the concept that he had in a book and he gave it to the world and turned it into a religion. And like I've said before, I think that's how most religions start. Most religions start as a really good book that was written at a time when people really couldn't tell the difference between reality and, and reality and unreality. And... Scientology is one of those rules that kind of skipped that because Scientology was formed at a time where you had people who had a common sense and knew that this might not be real, this might not be real. But because the, I guess maybe he was very charismatic. I guess maybe this, I guess Mary, maybe the, maybe just the way he described himself, maybe just the way he painted the picture for Scientology was so great that people were fascinated by it and they just decided to stick with it. I feel like personally that. When you have scenarios like this, you know, this is a very touchy subject. I don't think this is a subject that a lot of people will feel comfortable about talking about. Gabi Cordoza, Chicha Benvindo. This is a topic that I feel a lot of people won't feel that comfortable talking about because, of course, you know, it's sensitive. You know, we're talking about religion. We're talking about, you know, somebody's religion. We're talking about somebody's faith. And, of course, anytime you talk about that, they're always you're always going to have a back, a strong backlash. You're always going to have some people who feel sensitive to that. But... There's a part of my mind that works as a philosopher, along with being a writer, along with being a broadcaster. And I feel that when you have subjects like this, you have to take the time to address them because we're all curious. We're all curious. I feel like when you grow up in a church, when you grow up in a Christian church, particularly in Pentecostal churches or Baptist churches, you have it to where the pastor will tell you, if you have an idea that I don't have the answer to off the top of my head, then you should keep it to yourself. And I don't like that mentality because that's how the Catholic Church kept in charge of Britain and kept in charge of other European countries for 700 years by saying, oh, if you didn't agree, if you don't agree with me, then I would excommunicate you from the church. And keep in mind, this was at a time where when if you were excommunicated from the church, you were basically dead to the rest of society. You know, your mom and father probably wouldn't talk to you anymore. Your sister and brother probably wouldn't feel comfortable talking with you anymore. You would literally be a non-existent being in your own community. The friends that you used to have, they don't even love you anymore. They won't even touch you, talk to you no more. So I don't like that. I don't like that all powerful way of trying to hold sway over people by keeping them dumb. It's just like how back in those times in the 1500s to 1400s, they didn't want anybody to be able to read the Bible. They didn't want anybody to be able to read the Bible except the pastor. That's BS to me, but like I said, that was their tactics. They wanted to keep control of you. They knew the power of knowledge. We're at a time nowadays where we are really, we are really discrediting the power of being able to look at something and process information freely because there was a time when you couldn't get that knowledge. You know, I can look up on right now on my phone right now and Google any knowledge or any any I can Google anything that I want to on the cell phone. There was a time when you didn't weren't able to do that. There was a time when you didn't have that option. Um, I feel like as black people, too, you know, not to, not that not in this podcast, I promise you, bottom of my heart, this podcast is not solely targeted to black people. But I feel like in the bottom of my heart that that's the problem. With that's the problem with people is we we have this we have an access to so much knowledge but we don't take the time to think we don't take the time to analyze and see the connections between things. I think the most revolutionary intellectuals in those times, whether in the 1400s, whether in the 1500s, 1600s, etc., 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 even up until a time when you had the Martin Luther Kings and the Marcus Garveys, I feel that the most revolutionary people were the people who took the time to think when nobody else was thinking. You know, we're at a time now where you have so much knowledge, but you have set the option to present bullshit knowledge so you can go on TV and see a Real Housewives of Atlanta. You can go on TV and see Real Housewives of Atlanta. You can go on TV and see uh, all this BS stuff that just destroys your mind, basically. This is of no use to you at all in modern day society. It doesn't even help you entertain you or anything like that. And it's just crazy to me, man. So, 
you know, they always have those things. You're always going to have those revolutionary groups to talk about stay woke, stay praised, or be aware of your surroundings, know what's going on, and all this, etc., etc. But in my opinion, I feel that one of the most powerful things you can do is stay woke, but also try to keep a balance between being awoke and not being paranoid. Because I feel like a lot of the times when you have those people who touch into that higher intellect realm, they get so high into it that they just sound crazy to the rest of us. And it's not that they're crazy, just that there's a there's a midpoint, you know, and I, I hate to get into this to astrology. Um, so in astrology, I, I was reading about it in astrology. My North Node, which is my destiny, is in the third house, which is the house of communications, you know, broadcasting, comedy, teaching, anything that's communicating. My South Node was in the house of um, the South Node, which is the destiny that is done and I need to leave alone totally, is in the ninth house, which is philosophy, travel, foreign worlds, esotericism in the highest degree. And it said that my destiny in my life is to. My destiny is to focus on that third world world, focus on that third house world, and to focus on my ability to communicate, on my ability to communicate, on my ability to swear you, on my ability to hold you, on my ability to actually connect with you and not just get and not just live in my own self cage of wisdom and books that nobody else can understand. I think that's I think that's the problem with a lot of highly religious people. I think that's a problem with a lot of highly intellectual people is They'll get into this realm of this cage of just, I'm too smart for anybody to understand me, so I don't have to tell you anything. I don't owe you any explanation. No, it's not that. It's just that you haven't taken the time, all the intellect that you've learned, you haven't took the time to really figure out how to communicate your ideas to people. You know, it's just, it's just as simple as that. And to you, if you have an opinion about what I'm saying and you feel you disagree or you or you disagree, you have a separate opinion, you know, let me know. Comment on my post. Comment on my song. Well, comment on my um, YouTube. I'm always encouraging community as much as possible on these podcasts because I really do want to connect with you guys. You know, I really do want to take the time to understand you guys and, you know, see who I'm talking to, see who I'm talking to, see the people, understand you guys and talk. So also. I had a very, I had a very odd experience too. A few days ago, I was going through, I was writing right, and I was writing some of my books, and I had this very, very good idea for a book about griffins. And I was writing, I was writing a book, and I was focusing on my prose. Now, and, I, and I've told you before, I trust my voice and my prose. I trust it a lot. And I had went to this mindset where I decided I was going to start writing epic poems. I was like, you know, I'm going to do epic poems. I feel really more comfortable with the way the verses flow. Um, I had a, a bit of a kind of a kind of a headache because I was trying to write like that. And I just didn't want to. At first, I thought I did. But I felt like I felt like I didn't want to write a whole book in epic, po- po- an epic poetry prose style. But then... I had like a confusing moment and I went in my book and I checked out some other stuff. I checked out, I checked out, um, the notes in my Gmail, looked at some of the old prose that I had written in the past time, like, you know, practicing, you know, when I was first had my book out, when I was first doing it. And I realized the prose that I wrote initially, the prose that I had wrote initially, the prose that I had did when it was just coming from my imagination and not coming from reading how to write and reading what's this and how do you do this and how this and that and that and that and that when the writing was just coming from a generic place of who I was as a person to me it was more beautiful to me the sentence made more sense to me it felt more natural to me it flowed better and I think it's because you know it's it's, it's kind of like in comedy to some extent they say that the best jokes that you can tell are the ones that you already know or the voice that you're the most comfortable with because that's your true voice I feel like that in writing too, man. Like, I feel like, you know, you can learn the tricks of the trade. You can learn how to better yourself. You can learn to conduct things better. But for some of us, I'm going to say for some of us, there is nothing more powerful than our own natural voice in writing, than our own natural talent, than our own natural ability with writing, you know. And, you know, I, 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 you know, like I said, when it comes from that natural voice, man, it's a powerful thing. Um, so it's, it's, it's something to think about, man. I, I guess just to say, like, I didn't, 
it always fascinates me. Like, I'll go through all these... I've been going through the phase, just to tell you a little bit more about my life. I've been going through a phase these last two years where I've just been trying so many different things. Whether bettering my personality, whether bettering my writing, whether bettering my music, whether bettering my my broadcasting. And, man, literally every time that I do it, it always goes back. It always ends back into the same thing, which is telling me, be comfortable with the way you are. As it, as it is, and I've made a little bit of alterations. I've made little alterations at this time and that time to help me and assist me better. But ninety eight percent of the time, it's just been the same thing. As you know, what be you? you no, know, do the best you. Be the you. Trust your inner natural talented voice. Trust the voice that's already speaking to you. So, like I said, I, that's always going to be my statement to all of you guys. Is you know. Trust your inner voice, man. Trust it. You know, that voice is powerful. You have a sense of artistic vision that nobody else has because it's unique to you. Um, It's your decision to trust that voice or not. It's your decision to take that voice and use it like a paintbrush to paint the most beautiful worlds, whether through the medium of literature, whether through the medium of painting, whether through the medium of sculpture, etc., etc., etc. So, with that being said... I'm going to tune out today. I'm going to take it out because I have to record my next podcast. Um, the next podcast I'm doing is called the Paradise Podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to me on 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 Periscope, on Facebook Live, etc. Um, it's been an utmost pleasure. It's been an utmost great feeling. If you guys want to connect with me, any other any other outlets, you know, like I've always said, my Twitter is JT's Boulder Stream. That's J T S B O L D E S T D R E A M. Also, you can connect me on my Instagram at Dream for You Publishings and my Facebook at Dream for You Publishings. You guys, it's been the utmost pleasure talking to all of you guys. I'm so happy, hopeful, hopeful that we'll have better conversations in the future. It's been the most. My name is JT. Thank you.